Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Ashley Mayu. And there you can see uh, the turf course getting some serious uh, redoing. And then you see the tapita and the main track. So everything seems to be running smoothly. Fast main track. And, of course, the tapita is all weather. Yeah, big renovations on the turf course, but that should be exciting for the championship meet. And you mentioned that's the great thing. It could rain here, but the tapita is always going to play the same, and, and that's the theory behind it. Maybe not the main track, as we both know. <laughs> but uh, great to be racing on both these surfaces, and should be an interesting card today. I like a couple prices. Yeah, I got a couple of price horses. You know, I got actually my long shot. I think it's twenty to one on the board. A little bit of guesswork there. The first race today is going to be on the main track, the fast main track. It's a maiden claimer, uh, two year olds, twenty five thousand. Nice field of eight, and I know you put together an early pick five ticket. Yeah, looking at the early pick five and kind of the sequence here and what I went with, uh, I went three deep in the opener. I used the two Union Freedom as well as the number five Power G and the eight Cool Star. Race two is my single. I figured I got a single somewhere. <laughs> I really love Muted. What a nice filly this was on debut back in early September. It's so going to single her there, six to five on the morning line. Race three, I'll use two run uh, three runners, excuse me, the two Baranu, as well as the number four Union Gap and the seven Captured by Fate. I think there was a key scratch in here that kind of changed my selections around a little bit. Race four, I spread in here. I really didn't have any clue. I think this is one of the toughest betting races on the day. Twelve, five claimers, non-winners of two life. I use the 3, 4, 10, and 11. And in the final leg of the sequence, race 5. The number 6, Cosmore, has been such a nice filly undefeated in two starts now for Kathleen O'Connell. I thought if anyone could beat her, Carlos David's done a good job so far with Nacho Mama. So I just used the 1 and 6 there. So a $36 play here in the early pick 5. Yeah, that fourth race is where I have my 20 to 1 long shot. <laughs> and it's not one of those numbers. Just goes to show you how wide open that race is. So uh, starting this race off, as I mentioned we're at the top, it's a mile made and claimer for two-year-olds on the fast made track this afternoon. And, and I went with the number 8 and so did you, Cool Storm. We just want to go back and show you this horse is uh we're just going to show you to start here with stumbles and, and really uh, i think that course this horse a lot of you just see almost went to its nose there and just happened to run into a buzzsaw in that race called skippy long long stockings who just won for fun in that race and after you break slowly like that and have that trouble it's really hard to now I ended up finishing a very distant third but nobody was catching skippy long stocking no very distant you mean, mean distant 27 <laughs> lengths uh, behind the top two in there but actually had to face skippy long stocking in his prior start to Skippy Longstocking was the runner up in there behind Chancellor Bay. I think the big thing here to consider, I almost pulled the stat again because it's one of my favorites, <laughs> but maiden specialty to maiden claiming with two-year-olds is a great angle for Safi. When you look at the bottom of the PPs, just looking at the angle on the class drop alone, 38% from a sample size of 42. So some big numbers here. Edgar Zayas going to climb back aboard. I think a lot to respect about this gelding. My glasses were stuck in my pocket. <laughs> The number five, <laughs> Power G, is listed as a gelding. I don't know when they gelded this horse. Hard to tell it, but right. it's listed as a gelding. Trainer Antonio Sano adds blinkers uh, after the gelding took sort of the overland route and finished a wide second, beaten double-digit lengths that day, but was really wide at this level of distance. Jesus Rios is going to hop aboard. Yeah, Vancouver Diora was a 16 and a quarter length winner. I remember that race. We weren't sure. The horse was either <laughs> going to romp or not, and boy, did that one really win by a mile. It was the first time dropping in for a tag as well, so there was a big uh, improvement there, second a timeout just raced into a kind of a monster winner there blinkers on today um i joked last time i taught antonio sano about his angle here with uh, first time blinkers and generals or blinkers on 25 percent it's a really big stat for the barn so i always watch that equipment move and the number two freedom a uh, union freedom is dropping to this level on the main track I, I, you found a great stat i saw the stat and i said i can't believe it i might bump this horse up a little bit six to one on the board right now early in the way it's a huge reason why i couldn't toss union freedom from the early pick five and we'll show that stat right now for ralph nix i usually don't take my stats all the way back to five years but with this being a small sample and a strong number i had to use it so turf to dirt with two-year-old maidens Six for 14 for the barn, 43% in terms of wins, 57% in the money with a $2 flat ROI there. Uh, that's a big number here. I mean, you see the first two starts at this son of violence were both on the turf. First one at Meet and Special Weight uh, Company, then had a bit of time off, dropped in for 35, now dropping again. I, I think there's some upside with this Colt. Yeah, you knew, you would think the sta the amount of horses doing that would be more with, right. you know, the Ralph, how many two-year-olds he starts. Very good stat. This one was, uh, you know, had trouble last time. I had a little bit of tight quarters, finished fifth against those 35 maidens. You saw, saw the stat. So uh, certainly a horse that I also used. We had the same uh, three horses in, in there for our trifecta. Cold trifecta, I might say so. Start looking at other places. <laughs> <laughs> the second race, six furlongs, allowance optional claim of two-year-olds or the 
optional tag of $75,000. And I'm in the muted camp, too. I thought that was a pretty good race. Let's go back and show you this horse. We'll pick it up from the 316th home. And, and this one was just, you see, they, they challenged him a little, but this one kisses the field goodbye and just draws off to win it by seven plus lengths. Yeah, it was a huge performance. I mean, three to one here, but you look at the top three, right? These horses were all respected in terms of the pools and in the betting money. And Muted just poured it on a $450,000 purchase. Uh, this is a daughter of Into Mischief who just made it look easy, made for fun. You look at this field, it's funny. We both landed on Muted, and then after that, I don't know, we used the rest of the field between the two of us in this kind of compact group. But I think, obviously, that was debut. There's a lot to like about her. Yeah, and I think you got to stand on Tom Proctor. Yeah, Tom Proctor, this is a different stat. I was kind of looking at the bottom numbers in the form, not showing what I wanted. I saw w one last start, 14%. But what about maiden winners last out the past two years? 5 for 14, 36% in terms of wins, 64% the money with a $7.02 ROI. So he does better with maiden winners <laughs> last out than just general horses uh, winning their last start. Well, I used the number three in second. Yes, I'm a beast who became the only multiple winner in the field. One of the angles I always liked was she followed her maiden victory in July with an almost 14 length score. I know it was against 25 open claimers at the distance. So maybe she's cheap, but she's done something in the field that no one else has done, and that's win twice. So I, I always like that angle. I mean, I'm a muted fan along with you, but I think, yes, I'm a beast may be able to grab a share. Yeah, and last time out was kind of swift in that six furlong event when the, this one broke the maiden for $25,000. He kind of sat mid-pack early on and made a move. So maybe there's some versatility with him. You do mention there's some upside with being the only two-time winner in the field. Um, this is one I didn't use. As I said, we use basically everyone else in the group. Well, what about Deal Go Down that you used on the inside? Yeah, you know, I went with the one in here, Deal Go Down. This one out of the Mark Cassie Barnett. This horse actually traveled after breaking the maiden here at Gulfstream Park and raced on the turf at Ellis Park and at Kentucky Downs. And it didn't fare too well in either of those races. But I thought it was a pretty good performance on debut. I kind of went to the front in there was able to prevail going five and a half furlongs. Maybe this horse prefers the dirt. I like that since those races in Kentucky, they sent this one to the Cassie Center and has some nice drills under the belt in preparation for this start. Yeah, the number four you know, rushing to win is stepping up to face winners after using her speed to defeat 50 maidens. Eddie Police a pretty solid winning consecutive races. You get Ned Garzias in the saddle today. I, I just thought that connection would run well. And like you said, it's muted and everybody else in the field. Yeah, I didn't use Russian to win. I used Lightning Larry, who won on uh, in the second career start, then jumped up to the Florida Sire Stakes and didn't fare too well. So just going to make that second start after the freshening. So looks like it's muted's race to win. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'll have my Rainbow Six ticket on this eight race card. Welcome back to Gulfstream today. A little afternoon. Six furlongs, claimers, three year olds, a four and up. Non winners of three. $6,250. That is the race that's going to start the Rainbow Six this afternoon. And let's look at my ticket this afternoon. And it's $38.40 today. Uh, I went too deep in here with Brahanu and a Strong Ending. Uh, I wanted to use Union Gap, but I wanted to keep the afford uh, ticket affordable with the only $75,000 guarantee. Three deep in race number four. As you mentioned, that is a wide open affair. I like the five gunmen, 20 to one. I'll tell you why. I also used the 10. No getting over me and not so easy. I'm going to show you a video. Too deep in race number five. You mentioned Coe's Moore and I use rest of the story for Eddie Please the Jr. in that race. In race number six this afternoon, Long Beach Kid, Ambassador Jim, Went deep in race number seven with Cezanne, 12 volt man, Thorn, and Big Thorn, and also used the five in there. And two in the last with the number four horse in there, Splicer. But I like number 12, Spectacular Gal, on the outside for Sappy Joseph Jr. 
a little cheaper than usual. Yeah. It's not your usual 43-something in there. 38-40. We pretty much agree in most of the races today. Like you mentioned in the last splicer, I think 6-1 to one on the morning line for Gilberto Zerpa. I think that horse is sneaky. But the 12 might have a lot of the money just based on the performances of that one and the races that that one's coming out of as well. Well, we had a scratch in this race that I was talking about, the 6 for with the C tried. And one of the horses I did use, I didn't have it on top. I still had Brahano on top, but I bumped up strong ending. And Brahano uh, that we both have on top is dropping to his lowest level in the first race sort of stumbled at the start finished fourth against 12-5 condition claimers it was back in august uh, safi joseph jr jc diaz uh usually fleet-footed gelding we'll see if this horse can break sharply yeah pretty nice win two starts back at the distance while in for the 12-5 tag you mentioned last time out had some troubles one off is the post time favorite claim was put in was voided so we haven't seen this one since august 7th but it's had three workouts since that race at Palm Meadows, two of them on the swifter side. I think that more recent one on October 9th. It was over the wet fast, maybe just to keep this horse kind of sharp and ready to race. Uh, the barn, though, off this sort of layoff, good angle for them, 22%. Well, you use Union Gap in second, who's changing barns, going to the Jorge Delgado barn. After the claim, uh, he sort of got bumped at the break, failed to respond thereafter at this level and distance. This three-time winning three-year-old is from a barn that's you know, very good with first off the claim. You t you've taught me a couple things since working together on <laughs> set, and you always like when trainers claim horses back, and that <laughs> is the case with Union Gap. Actually, if you look at the most recent win, uh, this horse was in the barn of Jorge Delgado, so they must like this one, decided to claim him back for $6,250. Just hoping the barn change helps him. He's a three-time winner in his career uh, from his starts at Gulfstream Park, so all of his lifetime wins have been here over the main track. I used the number five strong ending. Now on this one in the Monica Mago. McGoey Barn is turning back to six furlongs. First outing since uh, he was bothered at the start, finished fifth behind a trio of next out winners. So it was a key 6,250 condition claimer going a mile. The apprentice is there. I always like those key races, you know, and I, I think behind Bahanu, you can go a lot of different ways. Well, I think when you look at the pace scenario here, uh, it's a little change maybe. C Trident's not in here, but a lot of these horses typically go towards the front, and that's one thing I can say strong ending doesn't do. Typically closes from off of it, and and while he might not pick up the major check, you can see that from his record here at Gulfstream Park, he does have five second place finishes from 10 starts over the main track. So I think if the pace is contested, he'll be flying late. What about Captured by Fate? I did not use this one. So Captured by Fate's a horse that I bumped up with the scratch of tree, uh, excuse me, C Trident. This one finished fourth last time out after being part of that pace scenario, tired in there at the 6250 level, uh, trained by Liz, Liz Dobles. And I think when you look at some of the races, last time out, tired in there. Chantel was aboard, and it's kind of happened the last two. I just thought looking at the field, uh, had some reservations about other horses and thought Captured by Fate may be able to stick around for a share. That is race number three, and that's where we're going to start our Rainbow Six this afternoon. We're going to race number four, and as Ashley alluded to, this is a wide open affair. Might be the best betting race in the card, especially if you got an angle. It's about a mile and 70 yards on the Tapeter. These are claimers, three and up, non winners of two in life, 12.5 down to $10,000. Uh, let's start with your three horse in here, Suleiman, who I, I sort of backed off a little bit, but I can understand this one. I think it's the morning, no, sec yeah, morning line favorite. Yeah, seven to two on the morning line. It's finished fourth in the last two efforts. Uh, my biggest concern with the son of Jack Milton is he doesn't seem to be speedy out of the gate. He's mm. never in a rush to break sharp. He's always at the back of the pack, and typically he has too much work to do late. Now, last time out, I thought he ran pretty well at the flat mile over the turf course. He only missed by a length. Uh, not so easy. Actually finished in front of him in that race only by a neck. So I'm just hoping it comes down to trip. We have seen horses now on the front end on the tapita. They can win, but I feel like if you're in a closing position, sometimes it's kind of uh, a little bit better than it would be maybe on the turf course. Well, talking about the horse you have in second, not so easy. Let's go back and show you this horse's race. I thought it was a pretty good performance, albeit this is going to be on the turf, but just watch this horse turn it from home as the number one that day and was really far back early. Now makes this five wide move and you're going to see as this horse goes through the stretch, actually gets carried out a little bit in the stretch and I thought it was a bang up performance for Kathleen O'Connell Miguel Vasquez handling the surface change today and, and once this horse changes leads, it just starts coming, looks like this horse ran well and here's where the horse gets pushed out a little bit even more. I don't know if that stopped this horse from getting Right. you know, the win, but certainly was uh, bothered a little bit in the stretch. Yeah, not so easy as a horse that I think has a good shot, only 10 starts in the career. My concern is really big performance last time out, but before that, there are some excuses. Some of the races were moved to the main track, but some of the performances just were kind of lackluster when they were on the turf. He was 20 to one also last time <laughs> out. So did he get lucky in terms of setup? I'm not sure. I still used him in here for second. Uh, that's kind of why I used him 
or second rather than my top pick. I was kind of between them. So uh, not so easy. He's going to need to show more, though. Maybe he was sneaky last time. Well, here's my long shot today, the number five gunman. He's going to wear blinkers today after setting the pace. Uh, on that particular day, I thought it was against the store closed buyers, tired to finish fifth. That was going five and a half furlongs on the Tapita. Going to stretch out around two turns. I like the fact that they're adding the blinkers. The apprentice, Franklin Callis. Here's a horse that I thought there maybe could be up there, if not on the lead, near the lead and, and just do a little better. I like the fact that they're in blinkers. I was looking for a long shot in this wide open race, so I'm going with the number five gunman maybe to spring the upset. I like it. That would be a big <laughs> upset if you get that price. That, the thing, too, to mention, you mentioned blinkers on. The horse has raced with blinkers in the past, going two turns, and has been okay. And that was one trying to break the maiden while in for $35,000. So uh, this is obviously a, a good spot to try it again and stretch out. So that's something I missed. But I was looking. I was like, why do you like the blinkers move? And I was like, well, he's worn him before going long. Yeah, so maybe you know, maybe he'll run well. And then the number 10, uh, no getting over me, is dropping to the 12-5 level. Going to go to the Tapita. Showed some early tracking speed and tired against the 25 claimers going a mile in the 16th on the turf. Victor Barboza, Sammy Camacho, uh, more of a, a con you know, who's training and who's riding play for me that can grab a share. Yeah, he's clearly not the horse that he once was way back when. You can see second in the inaugural, third in the, the Pasco back in 2019, 2020. But his recent performances, he's been against tougher. This is the lowest uh, race that he's going to be in in terms of a tag of his career. It's Victor Barboza Jr. When he drops, I always have eyes on him. And the big thing, too, is Sammy Camacho is in the irons. They're 23% the past year. Yeah, and as I mentioned, that, that's what sort of put me to yeah. that horse. Now, I probably push come to shove. Suleiman's probably the logical choice in there. But that's what the fun with trying to get those bombers to come in here. Not the case maybe in race number five, where you go six and a half furlongs, allowance, optional claim of fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, optional claiming price, $25,000. And we both had uh, number six, Cosmore, I believe, on top of our ticket here. And you got it. Did you single this horse? That's I did I, not. I oh. was, did, decided not to single. I know we kind of disagree for second. I think you yeah. like Nacho Mama in third. I use Nacho Mama for second. Second, uh, so just two deep in the first leg. Race six, I go three deep in here. I use the three ambassador gym, the four long beach kid. I think those are the two that you mm -hmm. used. And I also use the number eight spinning kitten, who I think is maybe going to be a little bit of a price on the tote board. Race seven, I just go two deep in here. We don't agree here necessarily. <laughs> I know you spread, but I don't think our order is nearly mm -hmm. the same. My long shot's in here. I like the number six, Big Thorn. I really like the performance last time out when he was second to Cozy My Boy. I also use the number five, Creative Cloud, who, if I'm not mistaken, was a late scratch here last weekend at Gulfstream Park. And then race eight. Had some money to kind of spare there, so I ended up putting some uh, horses in here. I used the two, Maida Valentine, a second-time starter for Jenna Antonucci, the four, Splicer, long shot, the five, Cupid Austin, as well as the number 12, who we both have a lot of interest in, Spectacular Girl for Safi Joseph Jr. Yeah, so they had a, a tough trip last time out but didn't respond, so we'll see. That was in the uh, Cyrus Stakes series, so well, we'll talk about that race when we get to it. Getting back to the fifth, Cosmore, going to try and keep her record unblemished, excuse me, after following her uh, debut you maiden victory with a rousing score against those 12-5 state bred optional claimers going six and a half for Kathleen O'Connell, Luca Panici. It's an undefeated daughter of Kozan. The only thing I'm going to play devil's advocate a little here, a lot of the horses that came back that I'm out of that races have not run that great. I will completely agree with that. Uh, the big one that I want to point out is the debut for Fruzan came mm -hmm. back to win next time out. But after that, right. I think we were expecting more and we didn't really see it from her. A another thing to consider, she's three years old. Just for an example, go to her inside. She's facing a seven-year-old mare. I mean, these are yeah. going to be deeper waters for her. But the way that she's won both of those races, I love that she's been comfortable to sit off the pace. She's been a runaway winner in both. So I still used her on top. The other thing I used is just the stat of Kathleen <laughs> O'Connell. We've always talked about a big fans of KO and the work that she does. I just want to look at winners last time out just the past year. Uh, this is a pretty big sample, 22 for 90. 24% in terms of wins, 49% of the money with a dollar and 68 cents ROI. When horses are going well, uh, she's really got them figured out and they can kind of repeat from there. Well, that's a big stat. Like you said, it's only the past year. That's not like five years, that's one year. <laughs> one year. So it's pretty good. Uh, you know, we, let, let's go to Nacho Mama, who's hoping to sit in Catbird's feet. I think this one sits behind the speed today. Uh, I, I think there's going to be some speed in here for Carlos David. Chantel handling the stretch out from six to six and a half. Uh, I think this it's a perfect setup for this horse today. I 
think it's a perfect setup, too. You look at the last couple of performances since joining the Barna Carlos David. She's hit the board in all of them. Uh, it's nice to see last time out the horse that beat her in the second spot. Simplify came back to win next time out. I will say two starts. Uh, when she won, uh, she took the overland route, and, and she ended up winning in there. Uh, I believe survived a, a disqualification in that race, and she won by two lengths. Her just recent form puts her as a contender. The number three, who you have in third, and I have in second here. We almost had the same super here. Rest of the story is turning back to a sprint distance on the main track. Followed that second place finish on the dirt in the seven furlong, $75,000 value with a stalk and fade last outing, uh, uh, you know, fade trip last time out of going around two turns on the turf. That was into Miss Gracie, Eddie Plisa Jr., uh, you know, Puts her on her best surface. She's had eight races on the main track with two wins, three seconds, two thirds. She really hasn't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. You can give her an excuse last time out. You mentioned it was a turf race. And her only other off-the-board finish was her first start off after a long layoff. So I really think she's going to like getting back on the dirt today. Uh, two starts back. Shady Summers, a very nice uh, stable uh, horse, I should say, for the Shady Boys and Carlos David and those connections. So she ran a game second. I know she was beaten by three and a quarter, but it was a really good race from her in the Azalea. Well, let's go to race number six this afternoon, a mile in the 16th on the Tapita. Uh, claim is three and up, 20,000 down to 16. And here's an interesting fact. Number four, Long Beach Kid is trying to become the first repeat winner on the Tapita surface at this meeting. So well, let's go back and show you this horse's last performance. We're going to pick it up from the 316 home when Long Beach Kid uh, draws off to win on the Tapita. Just to, you know, just just wanted to show you, came from off the pace and was good, was three to two that day. Uh, but no one else has come back and won yet. So uh, here we'll see how this horse runs today. He's also going to try to keep that win streak alive, yeah, keep yeah. it to three in a row. This was a really good performance from him on the Tapita. Uh, it looked like the inside horse was maybe going to kind of keep Keep on going, but he found another gear late right about there. You can see him kick off once again. And I've been a big fan of this horse. I think the $20,000 level is really a great level for him. He's been very consistent so far this year. So uh, it's a tall task to go for three in a row at the level, though. Yeah, it, it, it is. But I mean, the horse won under mm -hmm. Peter. It's just interesting to see uh, if this horse becomes the Tapita star, maybe, and, and reels off three or four of them on there. As you mentioned, going for its uh, uh, how many wins? Three, in a, three, in, three in a row. What about Ambassador Jim, who's going to give the Tapita? a try today after a pair of solid efforts on the turf in which he defeated 12-5 dated claim his two starts back and was really well met last time when he was second against those state bred optional claimers going a mile so uh, we're of the belief and a lot of people are that if you run well on the turf it sort of translates to the tapita and I think too with his run style from what we've seen kind of sitting just off of it or closing it does fare well for the closers as well so I loved his performance last time out I like that he followed up a win with a good performance because when you look down the page it had been a while since he had won. I think it was back in 2019. Uh, so I really liked seeing that from him. Uh, the winner, we always joke about coffee beans, like the bane of our existence. <laughs> we can never catch that one. But I thought it was a good performance, an 83 buyer speed figure for him, though. We'll see what he does on the surface. And the number eight horse in your spinning kit, and I know you added yeah. this one to your ticket, is stretching out on the tapete after returning from about four months, I believe, to finish a late closing third against open claimers on, going a mile on the grass. It was a good performance. Edwin Gonzalez actually going into today as our leading rider. Yeah, and when you look at this horse's last three races, three starts back, he won, and then next time out, they jumped him up to a starter allowance. Who did he face? Vow me now, Croy, hard-knocking horses. They gave him some time off. You mentioned third last time out at the 12-5 level, but uh, the horse that finished right in front of him, Uhtred, handled the, the Tapita pretty nicely. Nice. I know was hoping to give you a really big payday <laughs> in there, but ran outright his odds by right. far. So he's another one. He's going to sit off the pace. He should get a good trip. Can he handle the surface? Hopefully, and I love seeing Edwin on this horse today. Yeah, Edwin's been riding in great form. He's had a couple of really nice days. Race number seven today is a mile starter optional claimer for three-year-olds and up starter for 35 or less or the optional tag of $35,000. And uh, you went with the number six, Big Thorn, who's also one of these horses listed as a gelding today. Yeah, don't know when he was specifically <laughs> gelded, but the big thing with him is you kind of look at his races. He had a really great year in 2020. Uh, he won two races in a row. He broke his maiden against state bread, came back in a state bred state, and won and beat horses such as Fulmini and Castle King. Then he went into some deeper waters. They took him to Oakland Park. He didn't fare well. So since that long layoff, took him a couple races. They had him in deep waters. It didn't work out. But last time out, the horse that beat him, Cozy My Boy, a pretty nice local runner. He was in for the $35,000 tag and only missed by length and a quarter. And maybe I'm wrong here, but I looked at this race. I don't think there's a standout in here. I think right. you, you have to go with maybe a couple horses or you can make kind of cases for each of them. And for me, Big Thorn, if he's anywhere near that price, I, I think he's a big player in here. 
Well, we're going to give you a little homework with the two Cezanne, who's stretching out to the mile after following a nose defeat to that next out to Peter Winter in sixth race choice today. Long Beach kid going eight furlongs with a late closing fourth against 35 condition claimers. Going six and a half for Carlos David. He's pretty solid with horses stretching out in distance over 25%. So you watch that previous race. If that horse runs well, maybe you use this horse on your ticket. Maybe you use him. I, I'll admit it. I've used Cezanne in his <laughs> last couple, and he hasn't given me necessarily what I've wanted, but now this is second off the claim for Carlos David. Uh, last time out was defeated as the favorite in there in that compact field of six. But you go down the page, he's been in deeper waters in the past. Same kind of thing with Big Thorn. And I see Big Thorn had beat him, and you know he was in the same race. But he's one that's kind of getting class relief in the barn, we know. They know what choices to claim. They do very well first and second off. Well, when I, I had when if you remember my Rainbow Six, I had to use the five Creative Cloud. I, I didn't have this horse on top. You can see I got this horse in fourth, two to one in the morning line. Didn't want to get beat by Safi Joseph Jr. Yeah, you never want to get beat by <laughs> Safi. He has a couple in here. Uh, the big thing with Creative Cloud, if I'm not mistaken, was scratched out of a race, a late mm. scratch last weekend here. And last time out was fourth. Was favored there. Didn't perform well. Um, to me, he's needed to show more, shown more in his last couple races. He's two to one on the morning line. I think he might be a short price if he goes off anywhere near that. The only thing, when I started making my case again, why am I going to use Big Thorn over him? Two starts back. Alonzo is the winner. Uh, nice performance from him. I believe he went to Parks after that and finished second in a big race there. Who was second there? Cozy My Boy. So <laughs> both Big Thorn and Creative Cloud have finished right behind that horse, and I think that puts him kind of on a par uh, field here. Probably the most interesting horses in the race is the one you have in third and I have in second. That's 12-volt man, hoping to reignite his uh, form. After starting his career with really two nice back-to-back -back victories, came up empty in the $75,000 carry back in July and that $60,000 overnight handicap in August. Safi gives this horse a break. He's solid with this type of layoff. And a really good workout pattern on this horse. He does. His last two haven't been as quick, but look at that work three back mm -hmm. on September 26, 59 and three breezing here over the main track. And you can maybe make cases for me. He had two really nice wins back to back. Then he raced in the carry back without Lasix. So maybe you think it's the Lasix thing. They put him back on Lasix in the overnight, but then he stretches out to a mile over the slop. And he's now got to face an off track for the first time. So maybe that's a combination of things he didn't like. Hopefully fast main track here today. And he's got Lasix once again. Very interesting seventh race. Let's go <laughs> to the finale. And this one is about a mile 70 yards on the Tapita. Maiden claiming Philly two-year-olds. $16,000. We both ended up with the number 12 spectacular gal who's uh, returning to the maiden claim maiden ranks and uh, debuting on the Tapita. Got checked. I went back and showed you this. I was going to show this race last time. Got checked back at the three-quarters pole and then was never seen again. So now all you see is the check-in as she was, you know, actually... Uh, but she's, that was in the $200,000 Susan's Girl, so she's been tra training well. And, and I just think this is a good spot. I, maybe she had, was injured when, when she checked back that shot. I do not know that. She's interesting for a lot of reasons. She debuts sprinting on the turf against maiden special weight competition. She doesn't fare too well. I mean, she beats a couple horses in there, but she's beaten by almost 10 lengths. Then next time out, we're going to stretch her out, try her on the dirt for the first <laughs> time. You put her in a $200,000 Florida Sire Stakes in the, the Susan's Girl. She has trouble in there, and I, she was eighth in there. There were 11 horses. The big thing is you look at the margin of defeat. We all know how Fox ran <laughs> yeah. and kind of uh, outran the group, one by 13 and a half. So what do you do with her? Now she's dropping in for the lowest you know, of her career by far, the first time in for a tag, and what else is happening? Third start, third surface <laughs> in her career, but... I know Safi knows what he's doing, especially on this sort of drop angle. So uh, you have to use this one. Three's a wild, I guess. What about the number two <laughs> horse? That's the one I want to hear about, my D Valentine. I started looking at the field and kind of where these horses were coming out of. And I think when you look at a debut from this one, it was five furlongs on the slop while in for the $25,000 tag and finished fourth in a 10-horse field, showed some late interest in there. Uh, the third-place finisher, Wild Tappet, came back to graduate next time out. So this mm. one's dropping a bit in class. Why not? Hopefully we'll get a price. Yeah, Jenna and Tanucci. So what, if they believe eight to one on the morning line or something like that. Yeah, eight, eight to one, one on the morning line. Yeah. What about the four splicer stretching out around two turns on the Tapita today? Rallied last time four wide to finish second against Similar. That was going seven on the main track. Uh, Gilberto Zerpa certainly ready for the surface switch with that key half mile workout on the Palm Meadows turf. I think working on the turf might be getting this horse ready to run on the Tapita today. Yeah, they figured out something about her. I mean, on debut she didn't show too much. She took some play though, three to one was claimed out of that race. The next time out, took a lot of play again, <laughs> didn't show up. So she was well defeated 
by the winner last time out, but certainly she's trending in the right direction. And, you know, similar situation with the number nine who you didn't use on your ticket, Baby Blue. He's returning to the maiden ranks after failing to show much. That was in the $400,000 of my dear girl division of the Cyrus Stakes for Juan Alvarado, Sammy Camacho, handling the drop down to the 16th level. Did they think this horse had the ability to run in that $400,000 race? Dropping him immediately to 16. What do you do with a horse like this? I believe is... Uh, Three to no, one. Oh, he's the morning line favorite. Wow, Three to one on that. the morning line. Uh, for me, I guess my decision was to toss. I wasn't sure what to make out of the races. Uh, you know, I look at buyer speed figures. If you look at them, certainly she's a contender for the win honors, but she's been in deeper waters throughout uh, in some of them against Florida, against Open and others on the turf. I don't know. They've tried a bunch of different things that there are different distances, anywhere from five and a half to a mile and a 16th. And she hasn't shown enough for me to use her in here. I, I, at this point, I, I like the top three, and then I threw a price in. Well, you know, the Baby Blue was certainly not my top pick in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ended on the ticket just for the reasons we were mentioning, you know, the, you know being in a $400,000 race. But I don't know about the morning line favorite, but that's the beauty of uh, horse racing. So uh, that's how we see the A-race card. But we're not done. We still have our lightning round. And as Ashley and I do each and every Thursday, we show you the jock and trainer standing. I usually forget the trainer standings, but I'll try and remember. But here's the jocks. As we mentioned very early on, just want to show you what's going on around here. Edgar was out of town for a couple of, uh, for a Sunday, but Edwin really been riding great form. Edwin's been in great form. So is Miguel Vasquez. Uh, these riders even last uh, meet. Multi multiple win days are not out of their reach and they happen often, but these two have been really riding well and you can see very close race. Uh, Emisael, Edgar, and Sammy all with six as well. Looks like the top five that we always talk about every week. The <laughs> trainer standings uh, a little closer than normal. It's early on in the meeting. Safi and Antonio are are tied to six and six. I did Saturday's card. Antonio has a chance to win about nine races on Saturday's cards, it seems, of the ten. Mark Cassie right there with his two-year-olds. But I actually think that Safi has three two-year-old winners at the meet so far. So he's actually ahead of Mark uh, right now. And this, again, very early in the standings. Yeah, lots of angles. You can follow the two-year-olds, the, the Tapita conversation, which when we were talking last week, Mark Cassie was doing very well. So was Antonio Sano, but he had a bigger sample size. So uh, the race is on so far. It's interesting. We had a tie for like the first time in, in months. Yeah, and you know, one of the horse, one of jockeys, I mean, we didn't see on the list was Lionel Reyes had a mm -hmm. really nice Sunday with three victories. So just going to go back and, and visit you. He had that hat trick on Sunday and this is when he won. Uh, you know, this was his final win of the day on Examiner. It was a pretty nice race and he's just one of these guys. It was mentioned this 40 times that, you know, flies underneath the radar, but he's a, a really good rider here in South Florida. Yeah, he's actually listed on one horse that day at Keeneland. He decided to just <laughs> stay and he must have knew that he had a bunch of live mounts on the <laughs> Sunday program. You mentioned three winners. Uh, he's a tough rider and I think there's a lot of times when you see his races he makes really educated moves in his races. Well the Stronic 5 will be back again on Friday and it's a really interesting mix of races. We got one in there, the eighth race in there and it looks like a pretty formful race. I don't know about that. I haven't done the handicapping from Laurel and Santa Anita yet but I think it's going to be a pretty wide open and you know it always pays. Fantastic. It always does. It doesn't even matter if all the horses as we showed I think two <laughs> weeks back the biggest winner was nine something. It still paid a lot of money but uh, I believe last week week there was a price at Santa Anita which really kind of inflated that payout so we'll see what it brings tomorrow. And one of the, just one of, one of my favorite horses that we got to see here run a couple of times win back to back stakes and maybe about three stakes is Latruska. Boy this is some mare. She's such a powerhouse, and I love that she's got this following. We're showing her fifth straight score yeah. here in the grade one spinster from Keeneland. But the following, I was actually on social media this morning, <laughs> and I saw one of our assistant trainers is uh, traveling with some horses and took a picture with her. Everyone kind of loves Latruska, and how can you not love her? Yeah, I mean, just, and just you know, not, not a gigantic barn, and I think everybody's rooting for her that she go against the boys in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I don't know. I don't own her, so I can't say what I would do. Um, I, I personally, if I had to choose, I would maybe keep her against the girls. Yeah, I, I, I believe that, too. But, they, you know, they, they, you only get one shot, you know, right. to get the classic. So that is how we see the early action here today. And uh, hope you have a winning day. We'll be back here throughout the afternoon. And they're off. Second in the two path.